Hey, how's it going guys? It's John, Sub-Zero Gaming here. Uh, before we start, this video is going to be about enemy spawning. Uh, I got a few private messages about how to spawn enemies. Uh, like, for instance, say you want to spawn an enemy every 10 seconds, we're going to talk about how to do that. Um, this will work with any game you have regarding enemies. Um, but before I start, guys, I just want to say thank you for watching these video videos, subscribing. Um, you know, I've only been doing it for a few months, and I hit over 500 subscribers. Uh, for those of you that I do private lessons for, thank you. Um, the money that is you, the money that is given to me, is being used to build an educational website for Unity 3D game development. Um, I'm currently working on the website right now, and it is going to be a online school. It's going to function just like one. It's going to have a curriculum. It's going to have quizzes. It's going to have documents, instructors, so it's going to be really cool, so I'm going to be making that a uh, part-time project throughout the year, and um, I'll let you guys be able to help out with that if you want, I'll post a link in the description for that, but uh, overall I just want to say thanks a lot for watching my videos, and uh, let's go ahead and get started. So, for this video, um, we want to basically make it to where our game objects will spawn themselves to where we don't have to duplicate an object in the scene and have it there. We just want to spawn a game object, right, automatically. So, what are we, the what, what are we going to do? Um, how about we let the computer make more enemies as time goes by, right? So, enemy spawning. Uh, let's make something simple first. We'll make it that new enemies come out or spawn, as they say, every 10 seconds. So what you're going to need to do, guys, we're going to keep it clean code. So go ahead and uh, make a new C Sharp script and go ahead and name it like Enemy Spawn Manager or anything like that, okay? Um, and uh, we're going to focus first on the enemy object. Assume you already have an enemy in mind for your game objects. For instance, if you already have an enemy game object prefab or enemies in your scene, you need to tell this script, the spawn manager, which game object is the enemy. So you need to first, before you do anything, is declare a variable for the game object that you're going to use. Alright, here's our variable. You need to declare a game object variable. a game object variable and name it like enemy to spawn or something like that. Okay, so we have our game object enemy to spawn and then basically what that does guys is that's going to tell the game object, that's telling this script what game object we're going to use so when we use our instantiate method because how else are we going to spawn an object into 3D space. If you watched my previous tutorials you know that we use the instantiate method. So what you're doing is you're setting the prefab object to enemy spawn. So game object, enemy to spawn, and then that's where your prefab would go. So from the inspector, you just drag and drop your enemy prefab into that slot, and it will be attached to it. <coughs> so we have our game object variable that's going to describe the enemy game object, right? So now, in your update method, in your update function, I'm sorry, in your update function, Alright, so in your update function, just go ahead and spawn your object. And let it just and save it. Go ahead and spawn your object, guys. And how do you spawn your object? Um, if you watch my previous tutorials, you know it's instantiate. Um, if you haven't watched my previous tutorials, I suggest going to Unity 3D Reference and type in instantiate and look at how to use that method. Alright, so what you want to do is you just want to instantiate your game object. Alright, open close parameters. Inside there, you have two options. You can put the original game object, which is the enemy to spawn, right? That's the object we want to instantiate, which means initialize this object in 3D space. Or you can put the enemy to spawn, comma, a vector 3 position, which is x, y, z, 3 in world space, and then comma, a quaternion rotation, which is just a rotation along the x, y, and z axis. Um, for this, though, we don't need a vector 3 position or anything like that. Just go ahead and make it your game object. Save it. And then what you need to do now is, because we want to keep everything clean, go ahead and make a new empty game object. Position it to 0, 0, 0, and attach the script to that empty game object. And you can name that empty game object whatever you want. It would make sense to name it Enemy Spawn Manager. 
And basically what's going to happen is the instantiate method is going to spawn an enemy wherever that game object is. Okay, so go ahead and save it and run your game. And what you'll notice is that enemies are being spawned continuously, every frame. And within about 5 to 10 seconds, you'll probably have about 100 enemies on your screen. So now what we need to do is we need to, uh, we need to add a timer to check when it's okay to spawn an enemy and how long we have to wait till we spawn an enemy, right? So you find the spawning is too fast. So like how we delay an enemy's attack, if you guys have ever heard of like a cooldown system, we should, it's going to work just like that. We should give a delay to the spawning. So how many seconds do we want to delay it? Say every 10 seconds we want it to spawn something. So obviously we need a variable for delay, right? So go ahead and create a delay variable and give it a, vari a value of 10 seconds or however long you want. So in your variables you're going to add another delay, a delay variable, and then I'm going to use 5, 0.0f, so mine's a float. Um, that's my delay variable. And then, <clears throat> alright, okay, and then now here's what we have, guys. So we have our game object enemy to spawn, which is our game object variable. Right, which is going to tell us what game object to instantiate, which is our enemy to spawn. Then we have a delay variable, which is 5 seconds. And that 5 seconds here is how long in between spawns. Every 5 seconds I want an enemy to spawn to happen. Okay, So every 5 seconds I want to run instantiate game object. So how do we do that? How do we, how do we make a check for every um, 5 seconds that we spawn an object? Well, how do we know 5 seconds has gone by? How can we calculate that five seconds has gone by? Um, so in the beginning, guys, what's our objective? Our objective is to make our objective is to allow the computer to make more enemies as time goes by, right? So how do we how do we calculate how much time is going by? Um, if you watched previous tutorials, guys, time dot time is a method in Unity or a function. I don't know the terminology. Um, it's, I believe it's a method, a method in Unity that basically is the runtime of the game. So as soon as you start the game, time.time .time equals zero. Say you've been playing the game for a minute and 30 seconds, time.time .time equals a minute and 30 seconds. Time.time .time is how long the game is being played for until it ends. Okay, so basically what we would want to do is say, so what we want to do is basically say, um, we want to spawn something every five seconds, right? But what if we check for time.time, .time and then maybe if it's greater than 5, if it's, or I'm sorry, what if we make, um, what if we make a check for if time.time .time is greater than something, then we can instantiate. Now, unfortunately, guys, we're missing a variable. Think about it. Our delay is 5, and that's for how many seconds do we want to wait for another spawn to happen, right? Every 5 seconds we want something to spawn. How do we know 5 seconds has passed? Just by using time.time, .time, all that does is calculate the current time. So it's not going to subtract 5 from us. So we need another variable that checks if 5 seconds has passed. So we need a variable that says if 5 seconds has passed, then we can spawn. So maybe make a variable um, next spawn or can spawn. So like for instance like this, uh, variable can spawn and set that equal to 0 or negative 1 if you want it to spawn something immediately. Negative 1 will spawn it immediately and I'll explain that in a minute. So now we have three variables. We have our game object variable that we're going to instantiate. We have a delay variable which is how many seconds in between spawns. So every five seconds I'm going to spawn an enemy. And then we have a can spawn which checks if five seconds has gone by. And that's equal to negative 1. So now we have our instantiate method, right? And if you're lost, guys, just comment below and I'll try and make it a bit more simpler for you. So let's go ahead and look at what we have. What do we want to do? We want to, if five seconds, we want to what? Every five seconds, we want to, we want to spawn an object, right? Well, now try and, try and say it in pseudocode, all right? We know we need to use an if statement because if five seconds has passed, we need to spawn something, right? So what do we have? So we have if, um... If what we're check, we're measuring time, right? So if time dot time, right? 
because we want to know how long the time how long the time has passed. So if it's been ten seconds, it's ten seconds, and we want to check to see if it's greater than or equal to what. Um, we want to check to see if it's greater than or equal to can spawn the can spawn variable. Now let me explain this, guys. All right, and then if that's true, what do we want to happen? We want to instantiate, right? Instantiate. Okay, and then your game object enemy to spawn would go in here. Enemy to spawn. Okay. So, now what does this say? Why why are we doing this? So look, if time dot time, which is going to be right when the game starts, what is it, guys? It's zero, okay? In five seconds, it's going to be five. In ten seconds, it's going to be ten. It's just how long the game's been running. So look what's going to happen, all right? So it's going to say if time dot time, which is right when the game starts, it's zero. So if zero is greater than or equal to can spawn, which is a value of negative one, zero greater than or equal to negative one, true. Instantiate game object, which means it's going to instant, it's going to instant, it's going to spawn an enemy. But now what's going to happen is this if statement, guys, it's going to be run through every time, and it's still going to be the same thing because we don't have our delay method in there. We don't have our delay variable in there. So how would we make that work? Well, look what we're doing right now, guys. We have if zero is greater than negative one, then instantiate. Well, this constantly changes, but this variable is not changing. This will always be negative one, and this will constantly be changing. So this will be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, all the way up to till you end your game. So every update method, time dot time, which is say it's three now, is always going to be greater than negative one. So we need to make it to where our negative one variable updates to a new variable every um, every time this is a tr this is true. So how do we do that? So say we just start the game. If time dot time is zero, right? We just started the game. So if zero is greater than negative one, then instantiate our game object. Good. Now what do we want to do? We need to set this variable to a to we need to set this variable to change so that this is false for five seconds. Okay? We need to change this variable so that time dot time is false for five seconds, which is our delay. So how do we do that, guys? It's simple. Go ahead and just write your variable first. We're gonna redefine can spawn. Alright? And then set that equal to what? If this is we need it to be less, we need it to be less than time dot time for it to be false. And time.time .time is consecutive, guys. It's always going to be counting. So, for instance, say the game starts, it's 0 greater than negative 1. Uh, yeah. So, instantiate, and then negative 1 equals what? Right now, time.time .time is 0. So, what if we made can spawn, which is negative 1, equal to time.time? .time? Which is now 0. But we can't just leave it like that, because watch. If zero is greater than negative one, true, instantiate, <clears throat> instantiate game object, and then we're setting negative one equal to time dot time, which is now zero, and then this, by the time it goes back up and does another update, this is 0 0.5. 0 0.5 greater than zero? Yes. So it's going to be constantly true. Now we need to make it to where it's, it's going to equal zero, but give it a five second delay. Well, what if we just take zero and plus our five seconds? So plus your delay variable. So now what you're doing is you are basically um, you're basically setting it five seconds ahead, and this will be false. So what you're doing now is say we just started the game, okay, brand new, started the game. If zero is greater than or equal to negative one, which it is true, instantiate game object. Now can spawn, which is negative one currently, is going to be equal to time dot time, which is zero, plus the delay, which is five. So right now our can spawn is 5. So now in the update method it's going to loop again and it's going to say time dot time which is 1 greater than or equal to can spawn which we just set down here is equal to 5. So is 1 greater than or equal to 5? False. So it's going to loop it's going to not it's going to skip it. It's going to loop through the update method again. Now time dot time is 2. Is 2 greater than 5? Um is 2 greater than 5? No. So it's going to skip it and go back again. Now time dot time is 3. Is 3 greater than 5? No. 4 greater than 5. No. Is 5 greater than or equal to 5? Yes. So 5 is greater than or equal to 5. It's going to instantiate our object. And then 5 is going to equal the current time, which is 5, 
plus the delay. So now the delay, so now can spawn is equal to 10. And time dot time is now equal 5 still. So 5 greater than or equal to 10? No. So in 5 seconds, it will be true again, and another enemy will be spawned. Okay? So this is how you do a very basic enemy spawn system, guys. Um, to get a little bit more advanced, because there, there are multiple ways of doing this advancedly with, for instance, uh, ray, casting, uh, ray casting to a point where they spawn, or spawning them on the edge of the screen. What you can do is you can, in your instantiate method, there's three parameters. It takes the game object you're going to spawn, a vector 3 position, and a uh, quaternion rotation. Uh, you don't really need the quaternion rotation part because it's you're not rotating anything. So you can keep it at zero. Um, the way you do that, you just write quaternion.identity. <coughs> and all quaternion.identity is, guys, is it's simply just uh, quaternion.identity is the equivalent of saying zero degrees in Euler angles, which is x, y, and z axes, okay? So it's just zero, you're not touching it, you're keeping it default. Um, say you want to do the position, right? A vector 3 position, guys, is just an x, y, and z float uh, in 3D space. So what you could do is, um, inside your if statement or something like that, or I'm sorry, above your state, in your update method somewhere, um, just type, you can make a new variable uh, above, above this method here. Uh, for instance, name it, um, make a vector 3 variable, because we're, we want to set a position for it, right? A position, a vector 3 is just a position in one space, or a line. So vector, uh, vector 3 variable, give it a name of position, and then equal it to a new vector 3. Alright, a new vector 3 and you'll get your x, y, and z. Um, you should have watched my previous tutorials, my space shooter, something like that, to understand how to do vector 3 position equals a new vector 3, which will then give you the parameters like that, and you'll have your x, your y, and your z. Now, I also, just real quick guys, before I wrap up, uh, this will work. Go ahead and attach the script to your empty game object, and you are set to go. Um, to everyone who is messaging me about me not using the whiteboard and how they prefer me to use the code uh, text editor or whatever I use the mono develop. The reason why I'm not doing that right now, guys, is because you're not going to learn if you can see the code. Right here, I've described everything you need to do. I talked about the logic behind everything we're doing. If you can do this, then you are programming and you are learning. If you can do this, then you're comprehending. If I show you the code, you're not going to learn shit. Alright, so thanks again for watching, guys. Click, uh, click like, subscribe, comment. If you have any problems, give me a message. Um, if you want private lessons or if you want to help with the new development of the online school I'm creating, uh, I'll post a link in below for donations or if you want to contact me about information, uh, feel free to. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye.